Today I'm looking at how you can use an iPad and the video editing app LumaFusion to edit pretty much any kind of footage you shoot and work with. Hey guys, Blake Calhoun, and today I'm working in LumaFusion. And when you think of LumaFusion, at least when I think of it, I usually think of content shot on a phone. This is an iPhone. And so, typically speaking, you shoot something on your phone, and then you edit it in LumaFusion, or you edit it on your phone in LumaFusion, because you can do both, of course, iPad or iPhone. But for me, I like the idea of using LumaFusion with other cameras, meaning higher-end professional cameras. The trick is, though, working with LumaFusion it's hard to get the content or the media into LumaFusion. You can really only work with a couple different codecs, H.264 or H.265, so MPEG-4 and MPEG-5, HEVC. So that means, yes, you can work with footage shot with other cameras, such as this is all shot on an Osmo Pocket, this footage. You can import Sony footage, but for me, there's two problems doing that. First and foremost, you have to put all your footage on an SSD drive like this to import it. Now, iPad OS has made a lot of strides in this world, and I've done some videos on that, on how to import footage from an SSD or even a wireless drive. And overall, that works pretty well, but it is a little bit on the slow side. And, of course, you can't edit off a drive at this point. You have to still import everything into your iPad. The other thing is, I work with file formats that are not MPEG-4, such as ProRes, or I shoot in Blackmagic RAW, or I shoot on perhaps a RED camera. And so let's say I want to edit that kind of footage on this system. And the way you do that is by doing a proxy workflow. So while you're shooting on your RED or your Blackmagic or whatever, you roll a proxy file at the same time, and then your main file. And then you take your proxy files, and you could put those on a drive like this, then you could do a rough edit in LumaFusion, use the XML export aspect, and then do a complete online or a finishing on a desktop computer, Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. But for me, the biggest challenge working in LumaFusion and even putting your footage on SSD drives is media management. Now, before I get too far, you might be asking yourself, why would you want to edit in LumaFusion and then finish on your desktop computer. Typically, that's geared more towards high-end productions, I would say. However, another good example would be like doing a travel video. You're out on location or you're traveling wherever you are. You want to do a rough cut and then come back and finish it on your desktop computer. For example, you might have more plugins or you can do better audio mixing, that kind of thing. The video you're looking at right here is a video I shot when I was on vacation in Galveston. I did a review of this gimbal, the Smooth X. And so I started editing this in the beach house down in Galveston. And that's what most of this is right here. And then when I brought it home, I exported an XML and then I finished everything in Premiere Pro. So in saying all that, I've got a really cool solution that for me is gonna work great. And I think you guys that do projects like this or work with other footage will find this a really interesting solution to integrate LumaFusion into more high-end productions and or, again, for doing rough cuts when you're traveling. And that's using Frame.io. Now this is not a sponsored video, I wanna be clear. I use Frame.io for my various corporate and commercial work as well. And the nice thing is LumaFusion has an update that allows you to actually add Frame.io as a source so you can import footage from Frame.io into LumaFusion. And the really great thing is you can create folders in Frame.io just like you would on a hard drive. So there's a folder and there's media inside it. So that way it's almost like having bins working in Premiere Pro or DaVinci or Final Cut Pro. And for me, that's one of the biggest things that's tricky about working in LumaFusion, especially if you have a lot of footage, which often I do. So they've got a locations folder. This is a Frame.io demo project that comes with Frame.io. So what you see here in Frame.io, you open up LumaFusion and you see the exact same thing here in LumaFusion. There are my projects that are in Frame.io 
I click on the Frame.io demo project, and here is the footage that I just looked at. One thing that Frame.io does that's really interesting, and this is one thing that is great for skimming footage, when you upload to Frame.io, you upload your files, your proxy files, it could be ProRes or whatever, then when you drop it in Frame.io, look how fast that scrubs, because Frame.io creates HTML proxies. And so when you're in LumaFusion, you can very quickly go through and find your footage, then mark your in and out point and bring that into the project. And just to demonstrate how quick this is, this is coming right off the cloud. This has not been downloaded to my iPad. This clip here is downloaded. Now you see, when I load that, watch the little thumbnails right here at the bottom. Here's the other piece. See how fast that goes across? Now here's the one that's downloaded. It's a little bit slower, which is interesting because that's actually downloaded to my iPad. The other one is coming off the cloud. And then of course, here are the folders. You got locations and pre-production. So you click there and I have a folder. Again, this is coming off the cloud, but I can see it all right here in LumaFusion. To add Frame.io to LumaFusion is an in-app upgrade. And so there is a small fee to do this, but if you're working with any other kind of footage, especially it's so worth it because you upload it to Frame.io, then you open it in your project here. All these little icons here are actually comments that you can do on Frame.io and you can then see them in LumaFusion. But not only that, again, you can use footage from other cameras that you could never use before because when you drag it into the project file, Frame.io creates a proxy file so now that's downloading from the cloud into LumaFusion. Now, the one thing it does, it does bring that entire clip in. I wish it would just bring that one little section in. So now it's in the project and it's on my iPad. You can tell that by looking at the check mark over here next to the files. And then you can also go to your file folder, Frame.io, and here's the media. But now that has downloaded to my iPad. So this is a shot from another video I did, another YouTube video that is in Frame.io. What you're looking at here is in the Frame.io app on the internet. One more time. And so probably about blogger style. So again, that's in Frame.io, that's streaming off the internet. I go into LumaFusion and there's the exact same file in LumaFusion. I'm about arm's length, and so probably about blogger style. And so I dropped that into the project here. And so ideally the mic will be picking up my voice okay. All right, so now I'm at my desktop computer and I'm in Frame.io. So again, this is in the cloud. This is the same thing that's on my iPad, my iPhone and then within LumaFusion. And so this is the LumaFusion demo project. I can click in here, I can create a new folder, and I could say B-roll proxies. So now there's that folder. I'll click in there, it wants me to upload files. So here I can come over here and grab some proxies. These are proxy files I'd already created. You can drag those into there. And now they're uploading into the cloud, into Frame.io. The great thing is, once these are in Frame.io, they'll also be in LumaFusion. And that's the part that I like the most. I can get my footage up in the cloud and then use it in LumaFusion without having to have a drive. And by creating these folders, I'm doing my media management within Frame.io. And so again, just to be clear, you create proxies either while you're shooting. A lot of cameras have two card slots. You would shoot your red footage and then do proxy, ProRes proxies at the same time. Or once you get your footage back on your computer, you would create proxies and then you could upload those. And in the end, everything ties back together within Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve to do your online editing. And now they're ready to go. And you can see how fast you can skim these clips. This is a proxy file, it's just camera originals. This is from a short film I did called First Dance. So now that's in Frame.io, but I can see it in LumaFusion. 
All right, so now I'm back in LumaFusion. Come over here to my project. And the B-roll proxies I just put from my desktop are now right here in LumaFusion. And look how fast that loads. So hopefully you can see how powerful this becomes. This way you can, again, use any kind of footage. Doesn't matter if you shot on an iPhone, a RED camera, an Arri Alexa. If you make ProRes proxy files or even MP4 proxy files, upload them to Frame.io, connect LumaFusion to Frame.io, you have access to all that footage that you can then edit in LumaFusion and do an XML export to Final Cut Pro which then you can use that in DaVinci Resolve or convert it to Premiere Pro, and you can edit your final project on a desktop. So I personally think this is an amazing feature and will really open LumaFusion up to larger scale productions, whether that's commercials or feature films, etc. because now you don't have to worry about carrying a drive with you if you can connect to Frame.io. Of course, you do have to have an internet connection. So as long as you have an internet connection, you're good to go. So what do you guys think? I think this is pretty amazing. This app is a fraction of the cost of any app you could get on a desktop system, high-end professional features, all working on your iPad. And I can't wait to see where LumaFusion and the iPad goes in the future. Thanks for watching guys. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.